I once saw a naked picture on my FB news feed of a girl I knew from high school. I messaged her in case it was uploaded maliciously or accidentally. She said that she was sending it to her boyfriend and knew no other way. Reddit. What other ways have people used technology that made you facip them? My high school French teacher firmly believed that running a browser in a smaller window, with a few inches on each side of the screen not used, will speed up the internet exponentially. But it annoys me a lot when people don't maximize their windows. I see no benefits under normal circumstances. In our office there is only one widescreen monitor, the rest are standard for three ones. There is one person who likes to use this particular monitor because they do a lot of work with large spreadsheets, but the PC it is connected to isn't set up for a 16. 9 monitor. It's just outputting a regular picture and stretching it sideways, but nobody seems to realize. I know people who have their TVs configured that way, stretched or zoomed and they never notice. It's like nails on a chalkboard to me. I usually try and fix it when no one's looking. My dad used to believe that Bejeweled was a virus because it made our computer crash once. He still played it anyway calling it a virus the whole time. This piece of crap virus is so hard to get a high score on. About 15 years ago a user had problem with his display. When I went to swap it for another from stores he physically stopped me as he honestly believed that the files on the desktop were actually on in the screen. No matter how much I explained the display was just a passive device and the files were fine. He would not believe me. After the display was swapped and of course the desktop files were present and correct. All he said was well every day is a school day. At least this guy admitted he was wrong. Back in the day my aunt took an intro computing class. The instructor told them to right click and x would happen. My aunt wrote, typed, click and was confused why nothing happened. She then turned to the lady next to her and said, I don't understand. Didn't I do it right to which the woman replied, I dunno. Looks right to me. Looks right to me. That woman is a genius. My dad didn't realize that when checking out on an e-commerce site you just leave the coupon field blank if you don't have a coupon code. He spent 3 days calling Dell or whoever it was trying to figure out how to check out. I told him to just leave it blank and he got pee at me. Funny thing is that my dad was an early adopter of the internet and had us online back in 1994. Prints picture. Prints document. Pastes picture on document. Scans document. Prints again. And puts it in envelope to send it with the mail. TBH formatting pictures in a word document is freaking hassle. Working in IT years ago a customer comes in frantically with an ethernet cable. Her PC died when sending some files and she brought the cord cause that's where the files were when the computer went down and she wanted us to get the data off it. Should have told her that there wasn't anything you could do, because she didn't clip the ends and all the data leaked out. In laws bought the super expensive top of the line HD TV. Won't spend the extra money to upgrade cable service to HD. My boss wife called me up from her house in Nantucket and told me her laptop was broken and she couldn't turn it on. I determined, after speaking with her, that she had left it unplugged and it had run out of charge. She refused to believe me and wanted it sent to the repair shop. Not much I could do, so I called the repair shop so they would take it in. Later that day, when it was ready, I called the repair guy. I asked him what he did to fix the computer. He said, I plugged it in, waited a few hours, and turned it on. Then, I charged her $400. Good man. There once was a gal from Nantucket, who thought her laptop kicked the bucket. When sent for repair, the fellow just stared, plugged it in and still charged because frick it. I worked at a print department. Someone gave me their flash drive to find a document. It was not there, so they told me go to my documents I literally did a double take. I was like wh, no, those are my documents, she said the file must still be under my documents, doesn't my flash drive let you see all my files, I did turn my computer off, is that why, I, I, words, I couldn't even. Friend sister complains that her laptop is slow, friend and I proceed to see two, two, Chrome windows with 70 plus tabs on each of them and a Firefox window with another 50 plus tabs. She says she likes it that way. Turn friend's sister into every teacher at my school. That's my story. 
My grandmother refers to the browser as Google, because I set it as the home page. She types URLs in the search bar only to click the first result. When she goes to a new website she closes the browser and opens it again. She doesn't realize you don't necessarily have to start all over again. At least she closes it first. My mom just opens a new window then when the computer eventually slows to the point she can't use it anymore she unplugs it to start the whole agonizing process over. My dad would never open up more than two programs at a time on his old computer because the computer was dual core and thus only allowed two applications opened at once. When people type out long sentences in the search bar, for example, how do I find the jacket for my dog because I think he would look so pretty and all the other girl dogs will love him and he won't be alone anymore. I once worked with a woman who would surf the web by going to Yahoo, typing the URL of the website into the search box, and then clicking on the first link that came up. So if she wanted to, to go Reddit, she would go to Yahoo, type in reddit.com, and then click the link. When I told her she could just type reddit.com directly, she told me I didn't understand how the web works. My dad used to tell me not to open more than one program because he said we need to be more patient with the computer. I was scolded by a friend's dad when I was 12, because I turned their monitor off while the PC was still shutting down. The text has nowhere to go it'll get scrambled. My boss is absolutely convinced that the reason our work computer is so slow is because we go on Facebook and it releases viruses on every user's computer. Has nothing to do with the fact that the desktop is from 2004. Also we used IE. Well my grandparents don't understand technology at all. Last year my grandfather was in the hospital with cancer and my grandmother went to sit by him every day all day. And on one particular weekend there was an ice storm and she couldn't make it to the hospital so we let them Skype each other. They were both 88 years old and my grandmother calls a computer that TV thing so they didn't really understand the concept. My granddad kept trying to touch my grandmother through the computer screen. He just couldn't understand why he couldn't touch her if he could see her. When he said goodbye he kissed the screen. Sweetest and possibly the most heartbreaking thing I've ever seen. It was one of the last interactions they had before he died and it's still one of my favorite memories of him. This right here shows the real beauty of technology. More people should see this story. Well, my dad uses the computer to do only one thing and one thing only. Plays solitaire. He keeps a high score of 2000 straight wins because he controls it when he's about to lose. Now he gets an iPad, and plays solitaire there. My mother also has an iPad, that she only uses for solitaire. Email is just too hard. I just pick up the phone. World's most expensive solitaire machine. I work in tech support and the thing that annoys me most is when I ask someone to go to certain web address. Like their account management site. Okay so go ahead and go to blah web address. And then I have to proceed to spell it out to them 500 times because it's just so obscure and random to them that they have to type in a web address. Then I get the obligatory search results. Official site the customer asks. Which link do I click on? Then I have to ask them to click in the address bar and type it in there. Which again I have to repeat the address 500 times. Needless to say it takes the customer a solid 10 minutes to simply type in a web address and go to their account management site. Some people do not need computers. Customer service at my company gets around this by just emailing them the links. My wife trying to use her computer is so frustrating she really has no idea what she's doing. Let me see. She once took her laptop around her friend's house then called me and said is the internet not working she thought our house's wifi somehow extended several miles to her friend's house. The day I showed her google maps we looked up our house and she was amazed until she saw our car was gone. She rushed to the window to check it was still there, which it was. I had to then explain to her that not only do google not have maps in real time but the images were taken in winter and we were now in summer. I know there's been others but I can't think of them off the top of my head. Started thinking about maps in real time. Creeps me the frick out. My dad was trying to use my sister's laptop whilst his was broken and asked me why he couldn't log into his email account. He was writing his email address and password into Google search. Also, linked, my dad uses Hotmail for his work emails. Today's example, 
Mum called me saying that the writing in her email had gone all slanty. She then said that she deleted everything she'd written but it still wasn't looking normal when she started typing it out again. One time a manager at work called me into his office to help him find the asterisk key on his keyboard. There are two. Damn it. Till there's a second asterisk key. My ex-boyfriend didn't know how to hide his pee. He would also search for contents for his spank bank by typing stuff like boobs into Google. Back in the 90s a friend who was a police officer in a large city told me his commander asked him to fax a copy of an arrest report to the central headquarters, but to not fax the original arrest report, as he wanted to keep the original at their location. The commander believed that pages being faxed would physically dematerialize on one end and then rematerialize on the other end. Older than you think. Some people during World War 1 showed up to telegraph stations with hot soup. Wanting it sent over the wire to their brave son in the trenches. I work at a collection point for a department store where you order something online. Then can come pick it up to save on postage costs and can get it next day. If, when ordering, you put your phone number down. You will get a text message when your parcel is ready to be picked up. One woman came in, showed me the text. So I could get the order number from it. And I noticed she had replied to the text saying thank you very much. This totally made my day, I just like to think that she imagined someone sitting on a phone, manually typing out every text message to the thousands of orders every day, and she was just thanking said person. My office is, finally, transitioning to a paperless file management system in 2013. When we were told this, a co-worker flipped her crap, hands thrown in the air, exasperated sighs, etc and wind. So, when I get a PDF of 1100 pages of medical records, I'm going to have to print that out and then scan all 1100 pages in to make it digital, I'll be scanning all day. I'm sorry, but it's the only way. Instead of hitting the address of a site, googling Bing, then Bing searching the site, also, gapy at school, that happened. One time my mom got me Mario Sunshine for my birthday. I told her that it wouldn't work on our N64. The conversation went like this. Me. This isn't compatible with any of our game systems. We need a GameCube. Mom. I told the guy at the store that we have a Nintendo 64 and that we have a Mac. He said it would play. Me. He was wrong. This tiny disc won't even fit in the Nintendo 64. Mom. Our Mac has a disc reader. Me, mom, this is too small and the Nintendo 64 takes cartridges. Mom, okay, show me it won't play in the Nintendo 64. She followed me down to the family room so I could show her that the disc would not work in our Nintendo 64. I open up the bottom half of the entertainment unit and there was a brand new GameCube. Well played, mom, well played. She is too cool. I was trying to show my grandma how a cell phone worked, so I was showing her all of the buttons on mine, how to type a text message, etc. Then, I got a message, and when my phone vibrated, she screamed, threw it across the room, and it hit a wall and cracked the screen. Back in 1998 I downloaded several mp3s over my 56k connection on my computer that I paid for. My mom went to use the computer and decided it was running slow so she deleted all the songs it took me a dang year to download over that dang dial up. She thought they were viruses. Sigh. I can't believe I'm about to do this. Okay. So. I went to summer camp for many years as a kid. When I was about 8 or 9 years old, mom sent a disposable camera with me that year to take pictures of all of my friends and adventures and what have you. When I came home, my mom asked for the camera so that she could get the film developed but of course, I didn't have the camera because I was told it was disposable and directly after taking the very last picture I had disposed of it, I threw it away. I didn't know I was supposed to bring it back and get the crap developed. But needless to say, my entire family has never stopped giving me crap and I cannot believe I'm putting this on the internet for god's sake. But I couldn't help myself, so go ahead. Ridicule little 8 year old me. I'm used to it. Sigh. I used to work as an instructional aide at Butte College and way back then students would not get that you only format your disc once and that printing was not instantaneous. They would come and format their floppy. 
type a few pages of their term paper and then repeat this process every day and then ask why they only had the last 3 pages of their term paper due that day. To prevent wasted paper because students would start pressing the print key like a woodpecker we implemented a dollar per sheet of wasted paper fee. One time I heard this buzzing noise and say this student was shoving paper into the power supply. I asked him what he was doing and he said he was trying to insert paper into the printer. I told him the printer was in the corner of the room and got his printout which was about 400 pages of wasted sheets of reprints of his term paper. I had him read aloud the big sign on the wall. If your attempt o print fails do not try again. Ask for help but he stopped short of the rest and I told him to read aloud the rest. A dollar charge for each sheet of wasted paper will be assessed. He screamed and ran out before I got to tell him we weren't going to be charging him that much and I never saw him come back. My chemistry professor, when she wants to go to YouTube, she opens up Internet Explorer and on the search bar types Google. So it loads Bing. She clicks on Google link. Then once in Google she types YouTube in the Google search bar and then clicks on it. Yup, at least once a week. I had a friend who used to fix computers. He told me that this woman who hired him once kept having trouble with her floppy disk. Every morning when she stuck it in the computer the data would be gone. He said he spent quite a bit of time trying to figure it out. He had asked her what she did with the floppy disk when she wasn't using it. She told him nothing. He took her word for it. Finally, he asked her to show him what she was doing with it when she was done with it. She used a magnet to stick it to her filing cabinet. Major Fasipum. One of my friends will frequently call me up at 4am to google things for him because he can't figure out how. He's 19 years old. He also used to ask me call him when he needed to wake up in the morning, because he didn't know how to set his alarm clock. The rich grandmother of the children I nannied used her droid to call the operator for the phone number of Chinese takeout restaurants. Might as well have a peasant look it up for you. No need to do all that googling yourself. I am so glad my parents are done with the everything you download is a virus stage and have realized that I know what the frick I am doing and to let me do my crap. There was a restaurant in our downtown area for a while. It was called Casa Venezia and served awesome paninus. They had a teenager working most days. Because I worked downtown, the owner gave me a discount. It was 10%. Now, when the kid was working, he could only give us 50%, because there was a 50% off button on the till and he couldn't figure out what 10% of any order would be. My mom told me that her printer hadn't been working for weeks. I asked her if she was plugging the printer cable into her laptop after she hit print, and she told me in the best I'm not a freaking retard mullet that she had. When I was there a couple days later, I plugged in the printer's USB cable to her laptop, and lo and behold it printed about 5000 pages of crap that was in the queue. I asked her to show me what she was doing, and she perfectly plugged the USB cable into the RJ45 Ethernet port right next to it. What idiot engineer made the USB standard able to fit into an Ethernet port? Back when I had my old shitty PC in middle school whenever it would freeze I would turn the monitor off to let it rest so that it would unfreeze faster. We were actually taught to do this in my elementary school. My mom was once convinced my new computer had a virus because she received a virus email. The ones that just have a random link in them with my real first name in the subject line. Never mind the fact that the email wasn't sent from my email address. She was convinced it was on my end. The worst bit was my brother and sister, both computer savvy enough to know better, egging her on just to frustrate me. My mother once scanned a mirror because she wanted to save the picture and use it on her smartphone to check her lipstick. It was awesome. The picture was just a massive reflection of the scanner light peppered with glimpses of the inside of the scanner. I showed her how to use the camera app on the phone and the mirrored surface on the back of the phone. Problem solved. I wish this was my story. My friend is a manager at a Walgreens. A few weeks ago a woman walked in, went to the counter, slapped down a garage door opener and said just make three copies. I'm in a hurry. A very religious man once came into my father's store 
as my dad provides photocopying services. The man wanted some religious documents copied but demanded my father washed his hands before he touched the documents. My dad's response to this was to tell the man that before he walked in, someone else photocopied dirty jokes and that the machine was dirty. The man would be much better off coming in the following morning, when the machine would be clean again. Little to my dad's surprise, the man agreed happily and even thanked my dad for letting him know. The next morning when my dad arrived at his store, Guess who was waiting out front 10 minutes before the mall's opening? If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.